Yeah, wow. Is it a makeup look or did she just spend two hours crying in the bathroom at a dive bar? You tell me. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel and today we're going to be doing a little thought experiment. I had for the first time the urge, <laughs> the urge, the desire to spend. And I thought it would be interesting to follow my line of thought, take a look at my inspiration, kind of deep dive on desire and figure out what was it about the thing that inspired me that was drawing me to spend and how can I satisfy that itch without actually purchasing something? Okay, so what was it that inspired me? Or in this case, who was it that inspired me? Let's go way, way back to the point when I finished my brow gel. I finished my brow gel and I only had one. I only had one brow gel in my collection, so I needed to purchase something else to hold up my brows. So I started to search. I started to do a little search, a little hunting, and that was what led me to the beauty professor. Her name is Rachel Anise. I believe that that's how you pronounce her last name. And she has a blog called The Beauty Professor. And she also has a channel here on YouTube. So I came across her through my search for a recommendation for a good brow gel. But as soon as I saw her, as soon as I kind of started to, you know, deep dive through her content, I found myself really taken by her overall aesthetic. I, I couldn't exactly put my finger on it, but I found myself searching and searching and looking through all of her recommendations and, and really itching to have her look for myself. You know, you know the feeling. Now we'll get to what I purchased and also what I didn't purchase in a little bit. Um, but I just thought overall it would be interesting to kind of break down that process of desire. So for me, coming across that type of inspiration and starting to kind of have those feelings, that would be like an entry point for the loop. I've mentioned this in previous videos when I talk about my struggle with compulsive shopping, but for me, I have a loop that I get into. Um, which kind of starts with inspiration, then moves on to ideation, and then action. So in the past, that always looked like coming across something that inspired me, whether that's in person or on the internet, and then starting to kind of ideate and dream about how I could bring that inspiration into my life. So if it's related to beauty, then it's fixating on the details of a particular look and wanting to then move into action and purchase those beauty items so that I can have that look on my face. <laughs> it's a similar process for interiors where I might come across a beautiful home on Pinterest and then kind of break down the details of that home, search out those products, and then want to purchase something in order to make that image my own. So this year, I don't want to purchase anything, but I do want to continue to be inspired and I do want to continue to ideate, you know, to daydream and to, and to try to bring those daydreams into my life. So I thought here we could look at this picture of the beauty professor and break down what was it that I was attracted to in this image and what were the products that I was thinking about purchasing. I mean, guys, I was on the edge. I was on the edge about to purchase and I thought we could break it down and try to figure out what it was that I was drawn to. What was I looking for in the products that I was going to buy and how can I recreate that with the things that I already have? Okay, so let's start with the reason why I found Rachel in the first place and the thing that I actually purchased. She recommended the Make Beauty Infinite Hold Sculpting Brow Tint. I got the shade Cool Brown. I think that they only have one shade of this and then they have a clear one as well. So one of the things that I really was drawn to in her overall aesthetic and look was the kind of really feathery dark brows. And the thing about it is, this is so often the way, this is so often the way when we are drawn to something in someone else. I think what it is that we're drawn to is that they are doing what works for them. They are doing what works for them and it looks so good because it works for them. So for me, I would love to have big dark brows work for me, but they, they mostly don't. They mostly don't. I find that it, it very quickly turns harsh. <laughs> A dark, bold, laminated brow very quickly can turn harsh on me. But I was in the state, I was in the state, and this was a thing that I was actually trying to replace, so I had the freedom to spend and to purchase it, and I did. I did, and you know what? I don't regret it. 
it is great. I think coming off of having a brow gel that was really just not the best, I had, an, I had an Essence one, which in general, I, I do find that lots of Essence products work really well. They're a good drugstore brand, but the gel was just not for me. It didn't provide any lasting hold. I found that a couple hours in, my brows were just kind of sad and drooping and it just, it just wasn't for me. So I don't know if it's that that is kind of shaping my experience of this, but this is, it's so good. It is, it's so good. It's a pretty penny. It's a pretty penny. So I encourage you only purchase this if you have it in the budget and if it's not gonna affect other financial goals that you have. So it is quite a leap in price, but I find that the quality matches it. First of all, the component is so weighty and nice. The color is also just giving everything that I want, everything that I wanted to give. Anyways, and then the actual formula, I mean, cause the component is nothing, right? The packaging is nothing if the formula doesn't match. Um, it's great. <laughs> it's so good. So we're gonna start with brows and I need a mirror. I need a mirror. The hardest part about doing your makeup on camera is doing your makeup on camera <laughs> while also holding something else. So, so as you can see in the image, her brows are much darker than mine. Um, and like I mentioned before, mine can have the tendency to look harsh if I add too much darkness to them. So what I've been doing is I've just been applying the majority of the product kind of here on the outer end of my brow where I actually have the most sparseness and then just applying a lighter, um, just applying a lighter application here at the front. I just find that it adds such a nice shape to my brows. I'm able to control it and, and not have it look overdone. And it's actually like, I have a brow. I have a brow. With my previous brow gel, I just did not have these results. Also the thing about this brush is it has two sides. So there's one side that is more flat and one side that is fluffier. I'm kind of still working out how to use those sides and what they're for and how they shape the brows differently. But mostly I've been focusing this less fluffy side of the brush, the upper part, um, onto my brows first because I'm able to control the product a little bit better. And that, you guys, was the only thing that I actually purchased. And for me, that is really good. It felt really wonderful to stay within the bounds of my need. I finished a brow gel and then I bought another one. And that might not seem that revolutionary for people who don't struggle with overconsumption, but for me it was. I didn't find myself curating a whole cart of stuff and kind of creating a whole picture. Hannah Louise Poston has talked about this before, where she's or when she's shopping, especially online shopping, she finds herself curating a cart. So maybe she needed a brow gel. Then she starts thinking, what would look good with this brow gel? And then, you know, by the end of it, she has, you know, four or five products in her cart. But there is this thing I think that happens in us, those of us who are drawn to overconsumption and, and drawn to beauty in general. It's like, we want to complete the picture. You know what I mean? And so sometimes for me, I know in the past, it wasn't enough to just buy the brow gel. I wanted to then you know, just add a blush, add a skin tint, you know, and, and I kind of feel like I was getting um, something more complete. So the next thing that I noticed about her look was her skin. This is something that she chats about a lot, just really liking a glowy base. So I pulled from my collection a couple of different products that could do that for me as well. Number one on the list, is the MAC Face and Body. This is my go-to foundation, it's my favorite foundation, and it always provides such a natural, glowy, skin-like thing. But I'm not gonna use it alone, I'm actually gonna do a concoction type of situation. Another thing that I grabbed was my only primer. This is actually something I use much more as a highlight, but it's the Artist Couture Prep and Glow Blurring Perfection Primer. It just kind of adds a nice glowy finish. And then I also grabbed the Milk Makeup um, sunshine skin tint. This also leaves everything very glowy and lit from within. So we're going to just use a little bit of everything and see if we can get that glowy base that I'm looking for. Okay, so that's the Artist Couture Primer. As you can see, it has already added a lot of glow, but why stop there? We're concocting today.
right, things are looking very glowy, <laughs> very glowy, and that's what we want. That's what we want. So now for the MAC face and body. Gotta shake it, gotta shake it. I love a product you can apply with your hands. This one, you have to kind of work it between your fingers until it starts to get a little tacky and then apply. Already my brows are like set. They are set in place. I just accidentally rubbed my finger over them and this brow gel y'all. Okay, my base is basically done. I did just slap on some of the Living Libations Maiden Fern and a little bit of the Burt's Bees Tinted Chapstick. Um, these are in my project pan and they're like a go-to for moisturizing my lips when I'm doing my makeup. Okay, so one of the main things that I was drawn to in Rachel and Nisa's um, makeup look was her eyes. I just thought that her eye look was so stunning and I noticed especially that she had um, like dark eyeliner in her waterline, which is a look that I am never able to pull off on myself. I just find that it makes things look so much more dramatic than I want it to, but again and again and again I'm drawn toward it. At first I thought that eyeliner in my waterline wasn't for me because I didn't have dark eyes. I find that that technique looks especially good on people with brown eyes, and so I was just thinking, oh, I have lighter eyes, maybe maybe I just can't pull that off. So when I saw Rachel's eye look, it really made me stop and think. <laughs> she has very light blue eyes, but I felt like the eyeliner in her waterline looked phenomenal in her. I'm like, what am I missing? Maybe I've gotta play around with it a little bit. And I think I figured out, potentially, what mistake I was making. Most of the time when I tried to put dark eyeliner in my waterline, I would put it all the way across, all the way across. So from the outer corner of my eye, all the way to the inner corner, wherever there was waterline, there was eyeliner. And I think that's the mistake I was making. So today I'm gonna try and just reserve the dark eyeliner in the waterline for the outer corner of my eye. I have two options. I have this Laura Mercier Caviar Eye Stick in the shade Strapless and then Classic MAC Teddy Eyeliner. I'm gonna start with Strapless and see if it works and if not, I can add more dimension with the MAC. Yeah, no, I'm not able to control this as much as I want to, so I'm gonna do MAC Teddy. Why does one eye always turn out better than the other? Why? Why? It's okay, I'm not angry at you. It's the makeup gods I have beef with. Okay, I'm gonna stop the eyeliner there and I'm gonna do some stuff to the top. So what I noticed in a lot of Rachel's makeup looks was kind of a smudgy, taupey, bronzy thing happening on the top. So I'm just gonna attempt that with some of the things that I have. I'm gonna start with this Rowan quad. I have the um, 75 degrees. I'm gonna try to build out the shadow in the outer corner just a touch. Okay, now I'm gonna take this Smashbox um, eyeshadow palette that I have and try to build up just a little bit of depth in the outer corner. Okay, so I'm not crazy about how deep everything is looking. And again, this happens to me all the time when I attempt to do these looks that I feel like look great on other people. It just ends up looking so much more dramatic on me. And maybe I just need a lighter hand. Maybe it just takes a little practice, but that's why we're here. We're experimenting. To try to soften things up, I'm gonna use this little angled brush and I'll use some of these softer colors just to try to blur the edges a little bit. Okay, that's already looking a little better. All right, now for mascara. I feel like Things never look exactly right until you add mascara and then you're like, it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Okay, so I'm not crazy about how the eyes are looking currently. I feel like they're looking very heavy down below. And again, my, my desire is to use the inspiration that I saw, but make it work for me. 
And this is just not a look that I would do other than maybe like a date night, like a late night date night kind of thing. And that's just not my everyday. So I wanna, I'm gonna take a little micellar water on a Q-tip, see if I can tone it down just a bit and make it more wearable. Okay, I think that helped quite a bit. This side is looking so much better than this side and I'm gonna take a reasonable amount of time to try and fix it. Okay, that was not a reasonable amount of time. We're moving on. Okay, so the products that I brought out for the kind of bronzy, glowy look that I want. First of all, I'm gonna bronze with this Chanel bronzer. It has a warm undertone, and that's what I would like to bring to my skin, some warmth. I also like that this is a cream bronzer because I feel like it still kind of melds with that glowy base that we have going on. All right, things are looking beachy. They're looking warm. Now for the blush. So there are a couple of things that I noticed about the RMS blush that I was considering buying. First of all, shimmery. So we're gonna to have to add a shimmery element, but underneath it has this kind of like ruddy, peachy tone that again is really giving beach, really giving sunburn. Um, and so I pulled a couple blushes that I have that could produce that effect. We might end up layering them and we'll just see what happens. First of all, I've got the Patrick Ta um, Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in the shade She's So LA. These are the tones. Well, this is not necessarily shimmery. I think we can add that by layering something on top. I've also got this Melt Cream Blush Light in the shade Sandy Cheeks. Again, with the name like, hello. It is for you, Rachel. No, I just, I'm drawn to beachy things, as we all know by now. I also grabbed the M Cosmetics So Soft Blush in the shade Pearl Tea. These two both kind of have that peachy element. I feel like the Patrick Ta has more of that red, ruddy thing going on. And then lastly, I thought we could experiment with the Surratt, the Surratt Lid Lacquer. Now, this is a cream eyeshadow, but maybe it would do what I want on the cheeks. I'm gonna start with the other blushes first, and this will kind of be a last resort if it's not working. But then actually, last of all, I have the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powder. This is what we're gonna to use to add shimmer. I have the shade Precious Petals, and as you can see, it's kind of pinky, kind of bronzy, kind of coppery, and I think it's gonna add the shimmer that we need. Okay, I'm gonna start with the Patrick Ta. Already that is giving a lot and I wish it was giving less. <laughs> okay, we're definitely sunburned. We're definitely sunburned, but have no fear. I saw Jennifer Garner do this in one of those Vogue get ready with me's and I was forever vindicated. Pretty much every time that I do my makeup, I always go in with a washcloth or some toilet paper and just brush away some of the makeup. Whether I'm taking the makeup off my chin or some off my cheeks, I feel like it just is like the finishing touch. And Jennifer Garner, Jen, as her close friends like to call her, um, she actually just took a washcloth and went on her face. And I was like, my girl, my girl, thank you for making me not feel like a crazy person. Things are looking a little raccoony, and I'm trying to figure out how to resolve it. Honestly, it's the light, it's the ring light. It just makes things look so much different than in person. And I'm still really learning how to do my makeup on camera. It's, it's a very different experience. I think for now, I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna add the highlight, and then we'll see where we're at. Getting close. Yeah, what is it? My husband is so cute. He's watching the kids and he just slipped this note under the door. It says, will you go on a date with me tonight? Circle one, yes or no? Oh, actually, no, it doesn't say yes or no. It says yes, also yes. <laughs> Details, 8.30-ish. Cuddles, a show, face masks, fun drinks, question mark. 
I'm going on a date, going on a date. And he clipped a bunch of face masks to the note. We'll see if we can fix this raccoon situation before my date. What will he think of me? We've got the glow. We've got the glow. We just have to resolve the raccoon. Okay, so here's how the blush is looking before I fix it. Um, it definitely has the tones, I think, of the crystal slipper, and it's got the glow. Now I'm just gonna take this um, L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. I've mentioned before that I use it for this purpose. When things get a little out of hand, I like to take a little bit of it. It's this very sheer, emollient product, and I like to take a little bit of it and just correct my mistakes. I'm just using it to kind of blur that line of demarcation between my under eye and the blush and bronzer. And again, this is just what happens when you experiment. I'm looking at someone who has a different undertone than me, a different skin tone than me, and I'm trying to apply their makeup to my face. And it's not an automatic thing, you know what I mean? But I think when you're in that stage of like inspiration and you're thinking about those products, you don't really consider the fact that they, they, they might not suit you. <laughs> that they might not look on you the way they do on that person who's inspiring you. So I feel like this mental exercise is so good for just like bringing yourself down to earth just a bit, like putting your feet on solid ground, getting your fingers into actual products that you own and trying to see really truly, what would that look like on me? And is it for me? And then, you know, I mean, a few months from now, if, if those are things that I'm still wanting and I feel like I can't create that look with the products that I have, then sure, yeah, like consider buying. But the space between inspiration and purchase for me has been too short. It's been too short and it has included far less logic than I would like. And so that's what I'm trying to put in here. A little fun, a little play, a little logic, just does a person good, does a person good. <laughs> Okay, I think we are getting close to the end. Um, I might do a little bit of a lip since this is just lip balm. Okay, I'm torn between the Violet FR Bisou Balm. I have the shade Calisson. Calisson! And then this Pat McGrath, beloved Pat McGrath Satin Allure Lipstick in Nude Venus. I think I'm gonna go with Pat. Okay, that is the Pat McGrath lipstick, and I used a little bit of the MAC Teddy to kind of add some shadow and dimension to my lips. There was this look that I saw Pat McGrath do on Sienna Miller, I believe, and the lip liner that she used was so dark brown. <laughs> it was so dark. It was so dark, but it didn't appear that way at all on, on her lips, on Sienna's lips. And ever since then, I've been pulling my MAC Teddy and using it anytime that I want to create that effect on my lips. Never before in the past would I have thought of using a brown that was so dark, unless I wanted to do something vampy, which I, I never want to do something vampy typically. But yeah, I really enjoyed that technique. I just finished up with my NARS powder. I always reach for that when I have a glowy base underneath and I still want to maintain the glowiness. It does a really good job of not being too overly powdery. Okay, so this is the finished look. This is my attempt to be the beauty professor. No, 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 no. This is my attempt to be myself while using the techniques that I learned from the beauty professor. And that is everything. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me in this thought experiment. I hope that this also inspires you to take the inspiration that you find on social media and use it to play with the things that you already have. Let's all dive into the nitty gritty of the things that we desire and pull from it, glean from it, the stuff that will be valuable to us the stuff that's fun for us and save our monies save our monies except for when it is appropriate and good to spend our monies all right that is everything i will see you guys next time